Hey coaches, I'm Thomas Padro, training manager at Up To Us Sports based out of Miami, Florida. Thank you all for joining us today and taking the time to watch our seven words training videos. Uh, we think that the work that you're doing is incredible and we want to continue to support you all and provide as many tools and techniques as possible to help you work with kids. Over this series of seven videos, we are going to walk through a training that we call Change Your Coaching in Seven Words or Less. The first strategy will be one word long, the second strategy two words long, and so on and so forth. Each of these strategies is an actual phrase that we encourage you all to say to your kids. Just saying these words that we're going to talk about today is going to help you connect with kids and help them grow in an even more powerful and meaningful way than what you all have been doing. Thank you again, and let's get started. Welcome to the first strategy of our seven words training. I'm Coach Andy, the National Training Manager from Chicago. For this first strategy, we're going to play a game to start. In this game, a photo of a trainer is going to appear on your screen. Your goal is to say that trainer's name before the name appears. We're going to start out slow and then increase the speed as you get better. Let's give it a try. Nice work so far. Let's pick up the pace and see how you do. Great job. Now I wanna challenge you to see how many of these names you learned. Pause the video and see if you can recite every name that you learned. Go ahead. Great job. Now let's dig a little deeper into this game and strategy. What was the purpose of playing that game? That's right, it was an easy one. It's to learn names. And that's a little bit more important than you might have considered already. We believe that names are the foundation of building a positive relationship, and that positive relationships are the key to ensuring that your kids have a good time in your program. Imagine if you were on a team where no one bothered to learn your name. How bad would that be? Learning names shows kids that we care. It's simple, but it's true. If you're one of the many people who has a hard time learning names, that's okay. It's actually a skill that you can get better at. Playing name games, using name tags, and practicing are all ways to improve your ability to learn kids' names. Even if those things don't work right away, your ability to say, hey, I don't know your name yet, but I want to learn it, is a very powerful statement. That statement does the same job as actually knowing a kid's name, which is showing them that we care about them. And that's the most important thing. So that's our first strategy. One word, name. Nice job. Welcome to our second strategy of our seven words training. My name is Marisol Flores, and I'm a trainer here at Up To Us Sports. Our kids are faced with many challenges in life, both on and off the field of play. When we think about what it takes to overcome a challenge, what is more important, innate ability or effort, confidence, and persistence? The answer is effort, confidence, and persistence. The challenge our kids face is that they have been hearing that they aren't good enough. They have a whole book of evidence that says they can't succeed. They need us to tell them that it is possible. 
They need us to tell them that we believe in them. When a young person starts to get a regular dose of this alternative belief system, they can begin to internalize it. This is one way that we build self-efficacy, which is the belief that we can bounce back from adversity. The challenge our kids face is that they have been hearing that they aren't good enough. They have a whole book of evidence that says they can't succeed. They need us to tell them that it is possible. They need us to tell them that we believe in them. When a young person starts to get a regular dose of this alternative belief system, they can begin to internalize it. This is one way that we build self-efficacy, which is the belief that we can bounce back from adversity. As we tell kids we believe in them and they start to see success, their self-efficacy grows. Now, those same kids are more open to trying new things. Then, as their self-efficacy continues to grow, they not only seek out new opportunities, but they begin to anticipate their success with what they're doing. Their script may be, I can't, I won't, and I'm not good enough. But if we can interject a different script we may be able to shift their thinking. But for many of our kids, words aren't enough. It's good to say that we believe in them. This is what a good coach does. But our kids need us to be great coaches. One great way that we can show our kids we believe in them is by setting challenging but attainable goals. What happens in sport and in life when the expectation about our potential is increased? The answer is that we often rise above. A good way to think about this is to think about a team that goes on a hot streak, right? Um, have you ever been on a team or been a fan of a team that does better than they should because they're on a roll? What happens to them when they're on a roll? Well, they believe that they can win, right? They start to believe that. As coaches, we must be believers for our kids. And not just in a surface level way, but in a deep way that really impacts them, that they can really feel and understand. It's up to us to make sure that kids know we believe in them, really know it. We think they know it, but we must make sure they know it. With everything that we do, we have to tell them our two word strategy as often as possible. I believe, strategy two, two words, I believe. Hey coaches, welcome to our third strategy in our Change Your Coaching in 7 Words or Less training videos. Telling kids that we believe in them is incredibly important, but we know as coaches we also have to make sure that we're giving them the evidence to truly show them that we do believe that they can succeed. To get us started on our third strategy, let's start with a little game. To play this game, we're going to show you a photo on the screen for 15 seconds. Try and take in as much information as you can from the photo. After a short pause, we're going to show you the same photo, but with nine minor differences. Your job is to see how many of the differences you can find within 15 seconds. After we're done, we'll put the photos side by side and circle the differences to see how well that we did.
How did it feel to try and locate the differences in these two photos? Did you find it easy or did you find it difficult because of the short amount of time that you had? We know that you're going to have more than 15 seconds a day with your kids in your programs, but we also know that you're looking after many other kids playing many different sports and doing activities as well. We also know that kids are going to come into our program every day with both minor and major changes that could be positive or negative. So imagine having to do one of these activities for each kid in our program every single day that they arrive while making sure that we're still running our sports programs and we're teaching skills and helping kids connect and make other friends. But noticing these minor changes is a very powerful tool that we have as coaches. But why is it so important that we notice these differences? Because it shows our kids that we're paying attention. Because just like saying I believe, it shows our kids that we care. And because if we can pick up on minor positive changes in a kid's skills or behavior, it provides them with the evidence that they can get better, showing them that our belief in them was real. We want to say, I believe, and we actually want to show them that we do. If we do this and we focus on the thing that the kids are actually doing, then this will assure them that our belief in them was real. And what message does that send? It sends the message that we see them. So what are some ways that we can let our kids know that we truly see them? We can show them and be happy and excited and smile. We can focus on their personal progress and we can find something they really care about. For our third strategy, three words, I see you. Hi, and welcome to our fourth strategy in our seven words training. I'm Nate Lejeune, a trainer here at Up to Us Sports. As coaches, if we really want to see kids, then we need to have the ability to call out what we see them accomplishing. We need to be able to encourage them to try on new skills and ultimately build an environment that supports practice, the trying on of new skills until you get better at it. I want you to think about you as a player. Think about when you played sports. What did a coach do for you that helped you learn new skills? Maybe they just encouraged you. Coaches are good at encouraging. They encourage you to continue to try on this new skill and continue to practice and don't give up. Maybe they took and broke down the skill in a simpler terms. So they helped you understand and grasp it on a more easier level so that you can continue to be encouraged to try that skill on and it didn't seem too big. Maybe they demonstrated it for you. Maybe they were able to show you the technique themselves that, and that too encouraged you that you too could do that and so you would try it on. Or maybe they just took your perspective. Maybe they got on your level and were able to help see things from your perspective and point out ways that you could continue to try on this new skill and get better at it. As coaches, that's what we're good at. We are good at teaching skill. The more that you coach sports and the more that you work with young people, the better at teaching skills you get. And a lot of coaches do this really, really well. And we just want to add to that toolkit. So I'm going to give you three things that you can add to your toolkit. We call them advanced skill builders. These are techniques that coaches can apply to their coaching that will help them teach skills even better. You ready? Let's get into it. Number one is called one to five. It is my favorite. One to five is an easy way to check in on your kids. You can check in on their day. How are they feeling as they arrive to practice? How are they feeling as practice goes through, or maybe how are they feeling after practice? This gives you a great perspective on where you can support your kids and maybe even where you can push them. How are they feeling about a skill? Maybe a one where they don't feel so great, or maybe a five where they feel like they're an expert. This is a great opportunity for you to gauge where you feel they are and have a conversation around that exact subject. A one to five check-in is a great way to see where your kids are and help support them to continue to try on new skills. Our second advanced skill builder is our demo show demo technique. 
This is so famous that it was often used by John Wooden and Pat Summit in their own coaching careers. The demo show demo looks like this. We would demo the skill. We would show them the skill that they are doing and where they may be messing up. And then we would demo the skill once again. This is also a really great use of technology. You can actually just take out your phone and film your young people doing the skill and show them in real time where they may be making the mistakes and where they can make the adjustments. Demo, show, demo. And then number three, instant replay. Sometimes we just miss a chance to let our kids know, hey, I see you. So in order to have them replay these moments for us, it reinforces that, hey, we care about you and you can actually do this. A lot of kids feel like I can't accomplish this skill. I can't do this thing. And when you have them play an instant replay, replay back a moment for you, even if you did see it, it reinforces that, hey, I can do this skill. I can accomplish this thing. And while we're focusing on skills, I'm going to give you one more thing, something that we can add to all of them. And it's actually our fourth strategy. And that's let's try that again. Just think about it. A one to five check in. How are you feeling today? How are you feeling about that skill? You know what? Let's try that again. Hey, you know what? Let's, this is how we're going to do this skill. Here's where you need to make your adjustment and what you're doing. Here's how you do the skill. Let's go try that again. Let's try that again is super powerful and can be applied to all of these advanced skill builders. When you say, let's try that again as a coach, you are building the environment, you are building the culture, you are creating an opportunity for kids to feel safe and taking risk. They know that no matter what, even if they don't get it right, they're going to get a a chance to try it again. And as a coach, this may feel a little abnormal at first, or hey, maybe you already do this and you're a rock star, way to go, congrats, continue to use them. But if this is going to be the first time, we continue to encourage you to try these on. And just like your kids, let's try that again. Because when we build a safe place for our kids, when we create an environment where they can continue to try on new skills, it might be the only place where they have that safety. And when they have that safety to try things again, they'll learn new skills and those new skills will go away with them beyond your program. So strategy number four, let's try that again. Welcome to our fifth strategy of our seven words training. My name is Marisol Flores and I'm a trainer here at Up To Us Sports. To help us with strategy number five, we're going to show you a quick video of an interaction between two of our trainers. Before that, we want to give you a minute to think about a time that you had to overcome a challenge in your life. It doesn't have to be something life altering or drastic but it could be. It could just be a challenge of finding some time to watch these videos. Or when you were trying to break into the starting lineup. Or maybe you were trying to create these videos. Anything where you overcame a challenge. Here's a quick clip of Coach Nate talking to Andy about a challenge that he overcame. Try and listen very closely to what Coach Nate says during this interaction. Hey Thomas, how's it going? It's going good. How are you doing, Coach Nate? I'm doing good. I heard that you've been struggling with some of your workouts at home. Yeah, it's been really tough trying to get a good workout here at this time. So have you figured anything out? Yeah, just recently bought some workout bands and they've really been helping. How did you know to look for workout bands? Well, I usually work out with some of my friends, so I decided to reach out to them to see what they were doing, and they actually recommended these. And what did you do after that? Well, then I needed to find the right ones because there's so many of them, so I asked my wife to help me look online through different places to see which bands really fit my workout needs. And did you get some in? 
Yeah, we ordered them, and I've been using them for a few days now, and they're really helping. So you couldn't find a workout, and so you started talking to some of your friends. They said that you should try out workout bands. You couldn't find the workout bands. You got your wife to help you look online to find the perfect bands, and now you're able to get your workout at home. That's it. It's perfect. Well, good job. Thanks, Coach. When Andy told his story, did you notice what question Nate was asking? He was asking, how did you do that? Coach Nate asks that specific question because it helps focus on not what happened, but the process that it took to overcome the challenge. The process is what kids can take with them into school, work, life. If I ask a kid, how did you do that? When they finally make their first free throw, they might tell me that they practice at home or worked with a friend or got the coach to stay after and help. When they're struggling to overcome a challenge at school, like learning a new math concept, we can use the same process. So our fifth strategy is five words. How did you do that? Welcome to our six and seven strategies of our Change Your Coaching in Seven Words training videos. These last two strategies live together for a very important reason, and in order for us to find out those reasons, we want to turn the corner and start to think about how kids come to our programs every day with a lot going on in their lives. Let's think for a second. How have you usually greeted people before? I want you to think of your favorite greeting and hold it in your head. You may have greeted folks by fist bumping, by hugging, by a traditional handshake, or by an elbow bump. When you have your favorite in your head, I want you to think about it through these three scenarios. And in each scenario, I want you to think, would I use this handshake here? Scenario number one, you are arriving to practice or a game and greeting your athletes. Scenario number two, you're attending your family's next get-together. Scenario number three, you're walking into your first job interview. In most circumstances, we may use our handshake in one or two of these scenarios, but not in all of them. And the reason for this is based on the context of that scenario. We know that learning about things like greetings are going to help us learn about the context of the communities and the context that our kids arrive to us in but we know that there's so much more that we can also learn about context that'll help us be better coaches and better mentors to our youth. Let's talk about those for a second. In order to understand a community, whether you're from there or not, what do we have to be aware of in order to be successful? These things may include community leaders, language differences, transportation accessibility, quality and types of school systems, or even resources like our programs. Feel free to stop this video and write down some other key context pieces that we need to know in order to be successful in our communities. We know that kids that come to our programs are often influenced by their context. And for many of our kids, that could mean that their context is full of stress, such as bad schools, food insecurity, poverty, or family challenges. If you think about yourself, if you've ever forgotten an item for an important meeting or you've been running behind for a very important event, you may have felt some stress, whereas others may not have felt stress at all. And that's the thing about stress, is that everybody experiences it differently. But no matter what we stress out about, stress has an impact on our brains, bodies, and behaviors. And when we're stressed out, we might not be at our best. Imagine a time where maybe you said something that once it left your mouth, you wish that you would not have said it. Most of us would say that we've experienced this before. Kids, particularly those who have a lot of stress in their lives, often experience stress differently than we do. 
And that's because they've been flooded by stress and it actually changes their brain. Similar to coastal erosion, this doesn't always happen the same way. The brain can change over a short, sharp burst of stressful events, or it can change over a long period of time of many minor stressful events. Our brains on stress actually change. They start reacting to all the things that we do when we're stressed out, which is not always our best reaction. And the thing is that they don't often have control over this because it's how their brain operates now. But wait, there's good news. I want you to grab some paper and a pencil or pen and sign your name with your dominant hand. We'll give you 15 seconds to go ahead and do so, but if you need more time, you can just go ahead and pause this video until you're done. Great, now I want you to switch hands and sign your name with your non-dominant hand. We'll give you another 15 seconds or so. Perfect. Now let's think through how this activity felt for us. How did it feel to write with your dominant hand? We may say things such as, it was easy, it was normal, it was smooth, or it was natural. Now think back to when you had to sign your name with your non-dominant hand. How did that feel? This time, we may be saying things such as, it felt difficult, weird, or even unnatural. That's because throughout our lives, we've trained our brains to do that movement with one particular hand in mind without switching. However, if we woke up every single day and practiced signing with our non-dominant hand for 10 minutes, would we get better at this? Definitely. That's because we can change our brains. We can rewire them so that we're learning new skills and learning ways to deal with challenges that we might find. The same can be said for our kids. We can help them change and rewire their brains so that they're better suited to deal with the challenges that they face. However, we need to be very patient with this. For kids who have a lot of stress in their lives, how do we help them change their behavior? The first thing is by understanding that kids aren't here just to ruin our days. When they have challenging behaviors, they're actually doing the best that they can do. We need to give opportunities and a lot of practice time, repetitions to do things over and over and over again. And we also need to leverage what we can, which for us is our safe space that we create in our programs and our relationships. Our six and seven word strategies that help with that are, let me know how that goes. This helps us support kids and help them while not making the decisions for them. And it shows them that we're interested and we care. Our seven word strategy is I can't wait to see you tomorrow. A study done on homelessness showed that people who are considered chronically homeless were that way because no one expected them to show up to life. What if we're the only ones who expect our kids to show up to life every day that our program's running? There was a study done at Harvard that looked at people throughout their entire lives and they wanted to find out what was the thing that you needed in life to feel like your life had meaning. And after all the results were in, it showed that 70 years of evidence tells us that relationships matter and they matter more than anything else in the world. Happiness is love. Welcome to the conclusion of our Change Your Coaching in 7 Words training videos. We hope that this was a great resource for you, but if you need more resources, make sure to go to our website at uptousports.org and visit our social media channels as well. You can also visit our YouTube channel to find tips and videos on health and physical activity. Thanks again for joining us. 
I believe that you will make a great difference with your kids and your programs. And remember, not everything we say as coaches has to be perfect the first time. And if it's not, we can always say, let's try it again. I hope you'll let me know how it goes, and I can't wait to see you again.